All right. We are recording Self-Directed, a podcast where we explore what it takes to build a legendary life and career on your own terms through conversations, interviews with people who've paved their own way to success. And today we've got a fun one. We're going to start out by telling you our stories. And I get to dig in first to Cameron, who is now the CEO of Praxis, previously the CEO of Praxis. And before that was you know one of, one of the very early team members. And before that, one of the very first customers of Praxis. So, and before that, just an all around good guy, I'll say. We will leave that up to you, good <laughs> listeners, to decide through this conversation. Um, but there, there are so many different uh, cool, cool points I want to dig into this because I think it, it, it's a great setup for a lot of the other content that we want to talk about. And I want to hear first, um, I want to hear first, just like, What's your experience as CEO of Praxis been like? Um, you know, what, what's it like? Good, bad, ugly? And then we can kind of go in reverse from there. Yeah, so I took over from Isaac in August 2019. So what was that? It's been eight months, which, which seems County. crazy. It has both flown by as well as feels like I've been doing it for longer than eight months. Um, no, I, I think I think we're in a great spot as a company right now, and there have definitely been some learning curves involved uh, in in the early get go, and there's there's some ongoing learning curves that that I'm always trying to kind of focus on getting better at. Um, but overall, I've I've really enjoyed it personally, and and I hope I hope the team has has enjoyed it as well, or at least not, not enjoyed it, you know, maybe. Well, <laughs> well, we'll let you know. I'm, I'm planning on rolling out a really bureaucratic um, annual performance Three, review, anonymous form, an, an, anonymous forms where you don't know who submitted it to, and, 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 you know, seven or eight months, I'll let you know how, how you've done as CEO. Um, well, uh, <laughs> I think, I think we'll set a policy where the CEO reviews all 360 reviews before they're distributed to, <laughs> to the team. I score myself. I, I get to adjust. Uh, you, it's like uh, golfing with a handicap. So yeah. <laughs> this, this, is, this is one of the fun things. So I, I know that you like this too. We both like business books and memoirs and hearing about successful people. Um, we're not going to put you in that category yet because you're still early. But I love to reverse engineer the stories of people that, you know, you know, climb through the ranks. Like CEO is not a job or title that everybody wants. Um, I don't think most people want to be in the, the seat that is ultimately responsible for some of the tough decisions. Um, and, I, and I love to reverse engineer that. What, what's the story behind people before they got to the, the, that position um, and, and untold success down the road, obviously? But I want to I want to dial it back in time, and because what we do is is in nature, thought of as a as an educational experience by so many. I want to talk. I want to start by talking a little bit more about education and your experience in school, and kind of start there. Like, what was school like for you? As as early on as you want to go back, all the way through college. Like, what was your what was your school and education experience like? Yeah, so growing up, one, I I did a mixture of private and public school. Um, pretty much up until sixth grade, I was in private school. And then I switched over when when we moved. I went to, I uh, finished middle school at, at a public school and then just went to the local high school um, and then eventually college. But, you know, the, the consistent theme for me was I did not take to a classroom setting uh, growing up. But at the same time, I loved learning. Like, I think I was a naturally kind of intellectually curious kid. Yeah. Um, and, and I love playing sports. So school, like formal schooling, very much felt like this eight hour block, five days a week that got into the way of the of things that sports. I actually... Yeah that I actually wanted to do. Um, 
And I think that's actually, that's stuck with me and definitely a big part of what got me excited and passionate about Praxis and definitely, um, I think hindered me as well as I think I learned some valuable lessons from, from those early experiences too. So when you were going through school, you know, you mentioned something that I think a lot of us, I know this was my deal too, is like sitting in the classroom is keeping me from all the fun things. But as you, as you got through school, um, you know, particularly older in age, you're, you're approaching that decision. What are, do I go to college or not? Like, did you ever feel like you knew what you wanted to do or was it just kind of this, this burning feeling that it's like, I know that school is not really the right place for me. Yeah. I, I don't, I don't think I, I ever like through high school, through college knew what I wanted to do. Um, I, I had some guesses of what I could do. I was, I, as funnily enough, as much as I didn't like school, and by the time, like, by the time I was a senior in high school, I very clearly knew I didn't, I didn't just like, I didn't just not like school personally, but at that point, I was developing pretty strong beliefs over, over like the value of school yeah. in general. At the same time, though, I was always interested in teaching. Like, I always loved helping my friends. Um, like sometimes I'd be in classes, I'd be helping them figure out how to do the homework that I had no intention of doing myself. Um, <laughs> and, and I, like, I, I was, I was a camp counselor at like soccer camps throughout high school and everything. I caddied, um, I got, you know, on golf courses and stuff. And I, I really enjoyed like the dynamics between a a good golfer and like a good caddy is it's just interesting um and so i was kind of interested in teaching i was interested in going to law school just because like i i was interested in politics i was interested yeah. in philosophy so that's kind of what i associated with those interests like oh maybe i'll go to law school or or something but really like i just had very limited context for what I could, what I could do career wise. I did, I think at an earlier age than most, I think I started to, to realize that, okay, I don't know what I want to do, but I know that I want to avoid what I don't want to do and, and what is not interesting to me. So yeah. as I was starting to think about career paths and, and interests, um, I really started to approach maybe, maybe like midway through college, like, all right, I'm not going to worry about having a five, 10 year plan or seeking out the most prestigious career paths and, and really focus on that. I, I told myself like, all right, I'm just going to try to pursue what I'm most interested in right now and figure out how I can get experience and let's see where it goes. Where? What happened that made you start thinking that way instead of the, the traditional pressure? Like I have to have it all figured out. That's the, that is the common narrative. I think for most college, college students, even just young people in general, that's the pressure that makes this so hard. Was there a defining moment or something that, that triggered a mindset shift where you, you started focusing on your immediate interest instead of some five, 10 year plan? Yeah, I, it was kind of a culmination of experiences that were building up to this, but, you know, I think probably by my sophomore year in college, I was had like, you know, just frustrations and going back and forth for a few years on figuring out what I wanted to do. And then, you know, how would that impact my school decisions of like, what major should I pick and, yeah. and all that type of stuff. And, and, it was finally, it was actually a conversation with my dad. We were talking about all this type of stuff. Um, and, and he finally told me like, just don't overthink like what you study in school. Don't overthink what you're trying to do five years, 10 years from now. Just focus on what you're interested in. Um, 
Yeah. And I took that to heart. I kind of I feel like I kind of had that in the back of my mind and I just needed someone else to tell me that like, okay, like kind of give permission. myself permission yeah. to do that. Um, and said, okay, I'm just going to do that. And immediately the burden lifted. Um, and in the last like two years of college, I really got a lot of value out of pursuing interests outside of the classroom. And I was like, all right, like at that point I was just like, I'm going to finish college and I'm just going to get like, the easiest route out, try to take as many classes that interest me, but just get in, get out type of thing. Uh, at that point, you know, expect, it's not like there was a lot of options to outside of college. And it, yeah. there, there was a couple of points where I considered dropping out and like, you know, there were certain job opportunities, but I think there was just like at that, even back then it was only not that long ago. It was early 2010s. Um, it was, not much of a question of finishing college. Yeah. Um, so anyway, I, I started doing that and I feel like that that's been what has stuck with me through, you know, from the age of 20 to, to 29 now. Yeah. So you started shifting gears in college. I'm going to reprioritize or, or reprioritize the way I reprioritize. Uh, I prioritize in the first place is I'm going to focus on my interests instead of some lofty 10 year plan where, what was, was there a moment after that, whether it was still in college or once you got out in the real world where you felt like, I know I want to do this thing. Even if it was just like the, the next step, was there a moment that you, you got that clarity and, and what was it? Yeah, I, I think from, you know, starting with getting, getting involved in like economic student groups and then taking on my first couple internships. And up until the first job I landed out of college, the reasons why I pursued those was that's what interests me right in front of me. I'm not thinking about what, you know, how does this uh, fall into like a 10 year plan. It was like, all right, yeah. this is the thing that's right in front of me. I'm interested in doing it. I'm going to doing it. I'm going to do it. And yeah, like, of course, while you're in it, you're, you're thinking big picture of like, Oh, what could this lead to? Yeah. And, and I was always, I was pretty uh, like aware and inquisitive about, Hey, people who do these types of things that I'm doing, like what could they end up doing in the future? But it wasn't from an angle of, I need to figure out what I'm going to be doing in 10 years. Um, and then the first time I felt like truly excited and, and had more of that long-term vision of like, this is what I want to do was when I first joined Praxis and the series of events that led up to that. That was yeah. joining Praxis, working for them, working for the company, it was like, all right, I'm all in on this one thing. Um, still, like, I don't care where it leads me to afterwards. I'm, I'm treating it as an end itself. Yeah, and and I don't want to just gloss over because there are pro there there are a lot of really um, cool, cool rabbit trails on the journey from I started following my interests and suddenly I arrived at this company that I really am excited about what they're doing. I see myself, um, you know, I see myself working here. So I, and I want to, I want to unpackage that a little bit. So you got out of college, you ended up working at fee in Atlanta, uh, foundation for economic, economic education. And at, at some point in the time there, you, you begin interning for Isaac Morehouse, Praxis founder. What happened in between that and you joining the Praxis team? Yeah. So I'll, uh, I'll try to tell a condensed version of this. So <laughs> I ended up meeting Isaac my junior year of college through pursuing things I was interested in. And then I kind of intentionally went out of my way to build a relationship with him. And then I ended up interning with him my entire senior year of school at his previous job before he launched Praxis. Um, while I was interning with him, probably like halfway through the year, that's when he was starting to come up with the idea of Praxis. And I think 
I was like the fourth or fifth person he talked about it and it immediately resonated with me given my interests and my distaste for education, <laughs> um, formal education. Um, so immediately I was like, oh, this is, yes, like this is what I've been wanting to get involved in. I'm so excited to see this, see this thing start. Um, so I stayed in touch with Isaac. I was graduating at the time. He was, the company wasn't even formed yet. So I was focused on, Hey, I got to go get a job. And yeah. the job I got at fee, I was really excited about that was following my interests. Yeah. Um, and I was just excited to like be out of college and feel like I'm finally like really starting life. That was a cool moment. Um, so anyway, what I did was I stayed in touch with Isaac. I helped out here or there on, on some small things as he was getting started. And as he was putting together the first class, we were staying in touch. And I think we had a conversation about this, but ultimately I, I kind of looked at it as like, all right, how, like, I understand the stage of the company right now. It's, it's just Isaac, you know, he's, he's got some part-time help and he's got like people that are willing to help him out to get this thing up and running. But, um, there was no room for full-time employees or anything at that point. So, and like, I wasn't, I don't think I was, I mean, I probably, if that was an opportunity right then, I'd probably jump on it. But, yeah. you know, I was, again, I was super excited about working for fee and that was a really valuable experience for me um so i was kind of thinking to myself like all right like i know i want to be involved with praxis long term what can i do to be valuable to them and the most valuable thing i could think of is to become one of the first paying participants and and join the first class of of the program and that allowed me to I think that was the most valuable use of my time uh, over over the next year because it allowed me to get to know the program in and out from a participant perspective. It allowed me to continue building relationships yeah. with the early team, um, and it kind of gave me it it gave me a unique skill set that nobody else had, like. Isaac can't talk about or see things from like, Hey, I've been through this program before. Um, yeah. like he, he's the founder, like TK has always worked on it. Um, so I think it, it kind of gave me an, an early advantage for when I did join the team, like, all right, I can kind of see things from, from both sides. And from the customer's right. perspective. Yeah. 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 And I try, so, to, try to keep that today. So in that, and, and and the models iterated some, but it, it's still like important. The the core thing is like I've I've been through this with you. I am an alumni of this program. I know what you're going through. That's about val that's valuable context. Um, yep. So making that leap from customer to employee is the thing I'm I'm also really interested in. First and foremost, I think I think what you said is a really valuable lesson that I don't want to gloss over either. Is that I realized the most valuable thing I could do is become a customer. I realized what stage the company was in. They didn't have the capacity. And that, like, whether, whether this was uh, maturity beyond your age or not, or just like accidental awareness, like that's really, really valuable awareness to have that versus I think a, a common mistake I see young people make is, is like not thinking about those things, those factors as potential hurdles for yep. the opportunity they're excited about. And that context is an important thing. Understanding the circumstances of the opportunity you're trying to get is, is valuable for helping you to figure out how to, how to get there, how to fill yep. in the gap between where you are and getting that opportunity, which is what I want to, I want to dive into a little bit more. What did, was there anything you did while you were going through the program to intentionally set yourself up as, as, the person, the person they're going to hire, you know, ultimately if this company succeeds, they're going to have to grow the team. How can I position myself best? Was it a very deliberate, intentional thing that you set out to do? Or was it more of a, a very happy accident? Uh, honestly, I think it's somewhere in between. Yeah. Um, I think 
like I knew where I was trying to get. And, and the way like Isaac and I talk about it is like, we kind of had this unspoken agreement, like, all right, when this can happen, we're going to make it happen. So I actually think I kind of had maybe um, naively, I just had the confidence that like, all right, this is kind of inevitable. Uh, like this is kind of destiny, but at the same time, so like that allowed me. I am the chosen to, one. Yeah. Um, I mean, look, look well, that, I, I mean, I mean, <laughs> looking back, looking in reverse. Yeah. It would definitely <laughs> seem like it. Um, no, but I, I think that kind of freed me up to fully immerse myself in the program experience from a yeah. participant's perspective. And just like one, like, get as much as I could out of it as a participant. Um, but having said that, I think what I was more intentional about was particularly continuing to build those relationships with the team members, yeah. um, particularly TK, because I did not know him um, before Praxis or anything. And then, you know, it, it pretty much gave me an excuse to... Um, to stay in touch with Isaac more than I would if we were just like, Hey, we're friends. I'm a former intern. You're starting this new company. You're going to be fully focused on that. You're not going to yeah. have time to, to just like chit chat all the time um, outside of our MBA thread. Um, but it was like, all right, I'm going to become a paying customer in this program so you're incentivized to invest in my own success, right? <laughs> and, um, and secretly, I'm, I'm kind of your boss now because I'm a paying customer. <laughs> so I get to tell you what I want out of this experience. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Give, give me a job. Um, no, but I, I, think, I think there's some truth in that. Like we definitely communicated way more yeah. than we would have if I wasn't doing the program and just like trying to maybe help out every once in a while. Yeah. Do do you think, like I know this hypothetical is universe to, that doesn't exist. Do you think you you still could have landed that opportunity a different way? If I didn't become a customer, yeah, yeah. I think the I think the other route I could have taken was just to become become like a valuable un, unpaid employee. And, yeah. and be like, you know, kind of pitch, pitch Isaac, be like, Hey, you know, you're just starting this thing out. You know, you don't have tons of resources. You're not looking to hire right now. Um, let, you know, let me figure out an opportunity where I can add value to the team. I'll, you know, I'll manage social media. I'll yeah. you know, help, help TK with the uh, first class of participants, et cetera. Um, honestly, I, I don't think I would have had at the time I wouldn't have had as much awareness to go yeah. that route as the customer route, because I was also just very interested in going through the program at that time. Yeah. Well, I mean, fallback plan, even if, you know, whether, whether your deliberate intention was to get hired by, by Praxis or not great fallback opportunity to just still take the value of the program and go land a job right. at another company. And, you know, you've made some great friends along the way. You get to live happily ever after in that regard. But what, what I, the reason I asked, you know, could you still have done this is I, I just wanted to kind of contrast the approach you took versus whatever hypothetical scenario you could have done to ask you, like, looking back, would you have done anything differently now? With, with that specifically, just the, like the way, to... the way you, when, when you kind of fixated, there's this company, they're doing something really cool. And it's the first time that I felt really excited about something. Is there a different route you would have taken now? Or do you feel like you took, you know, are there, there are things, mistakes you made along the way that you would, you would do differently? I mean, that specifically, it's, it's worked out pretty much how I wanted it to. So <laughs> hard to say I would do things differently. Um, with that, there's definitely things I would have done differently earlier on. Um, you know, let's bring it way back. Like as yeah. a kid, I, I would have, 
I would have loved to be even more aware of like, hey, like just completely own my kind of distaste for school and be like, hey, I do not find this valuable and figure out a way to either like really just 100% commit to the mindset and approach of like, hey, I know this is not valuable, but I know it's something I have to do. So I'm going to figure out a way to do it with like absolute bare minimum effort so yeah. that I can direct my effort and interests and engagements to other areas. Yeah. I, I think I, I did that like 50% because I wasn't fully able to like articulate to myself all like why I did not like the school approach. Yeah. Um, and then like kind of, kind of same theme, like in college and like, all right, I had, I feel, I think I had some good instincts about like, okay, how do I approach my career? I'm going to follow my interests and stuff. I would have just dialed that up even yeah. more. Yeah. Um, well, there's probably an argument to be made that you would not like arriving at those things, that mindset on your own without going through all of the pain of, of disliking school. That's just kind of a hard thing to do. Yeah. you know, without going through that pain, having the context for, hey, there's something wrong with the way this thing is done. I want to make it better. Like that, that seems like a lot of ammunition on the fire in context of what you're doing now as a career. Sure. So the other thing I'm interested in talking about is, is how you made that leap. So you get out, eventually you win this opportunity that the company you're excited about. What's the, what's the story from I'm one of the first customers. I'm one of the the earliest entry level employees. How did you become CEO? How did you position yourself along the way to set yourself up to become CEO someday? Well, it probably has I probably never considered myself entry level even though I I was and maybe that It was entry level. So No, <laughs> no, no, no I, I I know. I mean like <laughs> I, I think what was kind of cool about that early team was it just felt like we were, we were a small team and we were set yeah. out on to do something big. And it kind of like personally, it gave me the confidence, even though like in many ways we were failing forward, um, it gave me the confidence of like, oh, like, yeah, we're going to be the team to do this. We're going we're gonna to build something yeah. great here. And it doesn't matter how much experience you have. It, you know, it doesn't matter, like, do you have existing skills that can, that can contribute directly? Like, we're all just together. Like, I think we all had a very deep understanding of the, the vision that, of the company we were building and the mission. And, like, you know, we, we had that, I think, like, founders mentality and, and confidence so yeah. I, I feel like that kind of like kickstarted things for me, um, gave me the confidence to just be like, all right, and complete, like, what do we need to do to win? Like yeah. the goal was, the goal was to win, to build, to build the company that we envisioned. And that was my mindset, especially in the first, you know, especially in the first like couple of years, like that was, that's what was motivating me and driving me. Do do you um, think that was easier because it was a smaller team? Yeah, absolutely. And, I think, and an early stage company, I guess, too. At the yeah, same time. Early, early stage, big, like big idea, vision that was easy to get excited about. And then feeling like you were in this with the right people on the yeah. team. Awesome. So... You, you've, you've shared some good advice, I think, um, you know, about your own experience, how you, how you changed your mind, how you changed the way you, you thought about things that ultimately led you in the direction to get where you are today. What, what's your personal, how do you think about your career today? Like, how do you think and plan for your career now versus way back when, when you were just figuring it out? Yeah, so... <clears throat> This, this is probably going to sound a little contradictory to what I've been talking about with like, hey, I'm just going to following my interests, following my interests, 
focus on what's in front of me. Um, I think, and this kind of plays into like how I think I've kind of ended up as CEO and everything. Like I've always had a long-term view of, of it, like kind of anything like joining Praxis. I was not worried about, Oh, what's my position on the team right now today? It was, what do, what do we need to do as a team to win and build the company we want? And I was just always focused on that. And it's like, I don't care what our numbers look like six months from now, 12 months from now. I'm think like, what's the end goal? How do we get there? Are we, are we following like the right fundamentals for success? Um, and that's, I think that's true now more than ever. Um, coming back as CEO and, and being part of, you know, like owning the company and everything, having a substantial stake. That's, that's where my, my head's at now is I'm fully focused on Praxis and building the best version of Praxis, you know, over the next five to 10 years. Like that's my primary focus. And then personally, what I'm excited about is I just know like how much personal growth I will experience through that focus of building Praxis. And that's probably what I'm most excited about from just being in the position I'm in um, is like, I'm going to have to get out of my comfort zone. Um, I'm going to have to build new skill sets that I wasn't forced to before um, and just kind of take advantage of that. And, you know, definitely like kind of long-term interests of where I think I want to take my career in different directions. Um, they've evolved over time as I've gotten more experience and yep. kind of figured out like what I do and don't like. And um, I think, you know, one big thing through Praxis, like my, my primary reason for, for joining Praxis in the first place was more so the excitement of specifically what we do. And, yep. and now like, that excitement's still there, of course, but now I'm just as excited and interested in the opportunity to be part of building a successful business and then leveraging that into, you know, other opportunities, both like within Praxis and like, okay, what, what directions do we think this can go that we're maybe, you know, we're not necessarily thinking about today because, you know, three years from now, five years from now, will both be and the team will be more equipped to uh to think about that through our experience um but also like you know outside of praxis you know always always just trying to maintain that like discovery approach to yeah to my yeah. awesome so a, a lot of good nuggets buried in in the conversation so far really only two questions that i that i have left i want to wrap up with the the first one is um you just kind of painted a vision of you know, the next five, 10 years, this is what I want to be working on. What's, what excites you most about what we're working on now? What's, if, the, if you had to pick one thing, this is the, the thing I'm most excited about that Praxis is doing. What we're doing today or like what we're yep. building? Yeah, short, short or long-term. Okay. You pick. Um, yeah, long, long-term. So I think since we've taken over the company, we've clarified a little bit like, the long-term vision and the long-term vision gets me really excited. And we're trying to, you know, we're trying to build this, like the ideal program for that entrepreneurial driven young person that we we know through our experience that we can deliver an amazing experience and outcomes. And instead of trying to figure out like, how can Praxis become this company that hundreds of thousands of, yeah. you know, customer, you know, we serve hundreds of thousands of customers. Like our initial focus is what is a, what does a version of the program look like at maintaining the high quality participant that does the program now and getting from, you know, going from a hundred participants to 500 participants 
going through the program in a year. Like that's, that's kind of like my driving focus right now. Awesome. That's, and, and that's something equally excites me. So I want to wrap it up with just one fun, uh, fun question here, softball question. Um, you've lived a lot of lives probably over the past handful of years in, in different stages of the company and, you know, trying to figure it out for yourself early in your career. If you could give one piece of advice to a young person that that's in that early step, whether they're fresh out of high school, trying to decide whether they want to go to college or they're in college, they feel that pressure of trying to figure out what they want to do. If you could give them one piece of advice, what would it be? Um, don't, don't feel that pressure. Like don't, don't allow yourself to feel pressure. You're, this is a cliche, but you have your whole life ahead of you. And you know, this was most helpful for me. Like just, th I think like think long-term act short-term. So just, just try to find something that you think would be valuable to get involved in right now. And if you do that enough times, you're going to figure out what you do like, what you don't like, and get a clearer picture of what you're most excited about to, to pursue. You heard it here first. Think long-term, act short-term. Praxis CEO, Cameron Sorsby. Thanks again for tuning in to Self-Directed, the podcast where we explore what it takes to build a legendary life and career on your own terms. We'll be back with you again soon.